But I want to kick off this morning with a story, um, and I talked to a young man I know who's studying law, uh, and he's actually writing an essay at the moment on how the law worked in pre-World War II Germany and how the Nazis basically destroyed, well, destroyed, had this most awful set of rules for lawyers um, working in the Third Reich. Uh, it's an amazing, and he's found some amazing stuff which has outraged him. Um, I rang him last night and I said, what about this? What about a deal where a duty solicitor gets a bonus if you cop a guilty plea and it all gets dealt with in one day? And he said, oh, that, you're joking, aren't you? You're joking. That doesn't happen. I referred him to the news coverage that we've seen and he goes, oh, my God, it does happen. This young fella's going to be a lawyer one day. Uh, and it is happening. Um, a policy uh, promulgated by the Minister of Justice sees, and my understanding is that it's already in place, sees duty lawyers, that's like court-appointed lawyers who are hanging around at district courts and stuff, we're not talking murder trials and major trials here, receive financial bonuses for entering their clients under an early guilty plea. Um, the scheme sees lawyers paid an extra $120 per case on top of their usual hourly rate if their client admits guilt and is sentenced at a first opportunity. So, in other words, if they don't clog up the court system, yep, I did it, Your Honour, you work out, you know, whatever the, the you know, um, the conviction is and you move on. Uh, the Ministry of Justice says they're st seeking to streamline the justice system and there are no indications the policy is being abused. But a number of uh, law organisations have cited concern over the ethics of such a move and how it might affect public perception, perception of the law system. Well, I suspect there's more to this story than just the headline, but to figure out what's going on here, we are joined by someone who uh, has intimate knowledge um, as a practitioner of our um, criminal law justice system, Marie uh, Dyberg, the president of Auckland District Law Society, uh, joins us on the line uh, now. Marie, lovely to have you on the platform. Thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Not at all, Sean. Good morning to you. All right. Can we just confirm, uh, it's not clear from the reports, this is already in place, this is already taking place, this scheme? Sean, it is. It's um, what we call a pilot scheme. Uh, before any sort of change in policy is put in place, uh, no matter what within the law, you have what you call pilot schemes. So it's, uh, you can get review, you can see if something works, you can tweak whatever's not working uh, and all of that. And then eventually this new policy is put in. So at the moment it's being uh, piloted in Hamilton and it's due to also then uh, go to a couple of other law firms, uh, and that is uh, Christchurch. I think that's in uh, December. It's starting in Hamilton, and then it's extending to Christchurch and the Hutt Valley as a, a part of a pilot scheme. So uh, that is uh, the policy is to reduce the backlog in the New Zealand Criminal Court. There is a backlog, not just from COVID, but generally, sometimes justice moves slowly. So there's some very good initiatives that are put in place. However, the Auckland District Law Society and myself personally um, were are not in favour of this new policy where you give a bonus. Can I say one thing? You said um, you talked about duty lawyers acting for clients. Mm. That, unfortunately, is a real problem right to the core because they aren't really your clients. So, therefore, uh, you have different sorts of obligations uh, if, you, if you have a client versus if you're there to assist people when they have their first appearance. Very different. Okay, so you're like friend at court. Well, yes, you more than that. You do have obligations, of course, and this is where this new scheme still strikes at the heart of the um, not only justice is to be done, but it has to be seen, seen to, be, to done. be done. Very yeah. trite, but very true. Yeah. Very, very true. Because prima facie, and yeah. I'm not a lawyer, but that means at first glance, this looks like it would be open to corruption and that a lawyer or a duty solicitor would sit there and go, oh, I can make a bit of extra if I get this particular um, 
a person, charged person, to cop a guilty plea. I pocket a bit more money. I move on to the next one. That's what it looks like from the outside, Marie. And uh, from the inside, Sean, <laughs> that is the real concern that we have is that it is open uh, to corruption. Now, many and most duty lawyers, are, and I observe them, I used to be one for many years, and I keep up with what's happening. Many duty lawyers are absolutely ethical, they're hardworking, they do the right thing, they do their best. Uh, so that is the bulk of duty lawyers and, and that's the feedback that I get. But unfortunately, with any profession, it doesn't matter what they are, there are people who do not do the right thing and and it is open to corruption. Yeah, and, the, many, and, and you look at it and you say there is the possibility of pecuniary gain for a lawyer given different outcomes. And you just can't get around that, can you? No, you can't, because there are two, there are two things. Uh, there, there will be often very good reasons for you to be, be a duty lawyer and say, look, I think today is the day you should plead guilty for these reasons. Yeah. You can get um, better discount, you can get better deals, you know, from the prosecutor mm. when they say, well, okay, yeah, 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 it saves us work. All of those really good, legitimate reasons. So on the face of it, just because someone pleads guilty on the day, that is not a problem. But we, and you see, I go back, and I was one of the few spokespersons, on, particularly on behalf of the South Auckland Bar, because they couldn't speak in the same way when we had the dreadful Baisley report. Mm. Um, we are still reeling from the after effects uh, of that report where a colleague of mine um, in fact, um, I'm sure he won't mind, he just had a wonderful victory in the Supreme Court for Peter Ellis. His children, during this whole ferrari uh, where that we had the Beasley Report, we had Simon Power who brought in sweeping changes, whose children were ashamed to say, my dad's a lawyer, wow. because of the vilification we had. Now, that's the perception the public mm. head after that report and its perception mm. that is all critical here. Mm. At a more granular level, Marie, I was also wondering, are these duty solicitors required to disclose to their clients as they give them advice that they will receive a bonus if they plead guilty? And it's sort of like having a salesman for insurance uh, for a bank disclosing that he's going to get a commission. It would seem to me to be the right thing to do are there such provisions in the policy? No, there's not. Whatever what? you get paid Sorry. and whatever those incentives are, but I'm, ho you know, I'm hoping... That seems, sorry, that, that just seems really wrong. You should know if your yes. lawyer's getting a kickback from the justice system. A an extra bonus on a guilty plea, and that, that's another very good point you've just made because I'm hoping there's um, a lot of publications so that when people come to the court, but they're going to be informed that this is going to happen. But of course, it's exactly what Sir Kim Workman said is many people you're dealing with, they are inarticulate, they're not as educated as many, they're, they're frightened by the system, they may have been in the system before, but they don't know what's going to happen. So they may know perhaps this is happening, but they're not going to speak up. And therefore, if somebody is telling them to plead guilty, they're not going to fight back the same way as mm. what I would. I've always been a fighter back in, you know, the Catholic always wondering why babies had to stay in limbo and never see God, you know, so yeah. stuff like that. But... I'm going to challenge the system, but many are not. They're going to be too afraid to do it. But later, they're always going to wonder, did I um, just get, as you use the word, railroaded? Mm. They're going to use that word, not us, but railroaded. And should I have pleaded guilty? And they might go home and their family going to say, oh, look, we could have come to court. We could have given you references. Or they could easily be thinking, rightly or wrongly, I had a defence. Now, many defendants may well think they've got a defence, 
I explain over time. I sit with clients. I go through the evidence. I've done it all my life. I've never worked out of the courts. I've always had an office so that those persons can see, look, you think you've got a defence, you think you should not, you know, get convicted, mm. but let's look at the evidence. You never, you don't have time to do that when you are there trying to, well, you don't have the evidence anyway because you just have generally a summary of facts. Yeah. And you're not explaining to someone why they should plead guilty. Guilty, yeah. I guess, Marie, what it's we're in really here is a balancing act between, if you like, justice and efficiency, isn't it? Because I can yes, see, I can see the desire to have a more efficient court system, and I can see the the positives in that. Um, but there is that old saying that the the wheels of justice grind uh, fine but incredibly slow. Do we just have yes. to accept that, and that this is not a solution to that particular no. problem? And, and I, um, I definitely, um, the uh, Chief District Court Judge um, introduced a system that's been hard working for nearly two and a half years. There's been amazing changes already to the process and the system. And COVID's brought about a lot more in terms of being able to excuse attendance um, of your client from court while you go through the administrative process. Uh, dealing remotely uh, as well so that you can deal with many more cases on a given day. Mm. If you do remote, you can do seven cases. So there's lots of schemes in place. This is one, in my view, ethically has real concerns for me because I want people who are appearing in court as best you can to feel like they've had the right deal. And I think that you want to try and bring more senior lawyers back into this duty scheme where they are paid, uh, paid properly, uh, not outrageously because we know that when we do um, our own cases on legal aid, we don't get paid properly, but we do it because we want to contribute and do the higher cases. So when you've got the more difficult cases or where you've got something that uh, you can either say, look, you know, it's a guilty plea, but look, let's do a really good sentencing here. With my experience, bring me back into the court system. I'll give you efficiency on any given day because I'm not afraid to know that I'm doing the right thing. There are a whole lot of ways that you can make it more efficient to get those early guilty pleas. But paying me a higher rate, to, I, I would not accept it. And many duty lawyers have spoken to me and said, I don't want to do this. I feel really uncomfortable. That was the other question I was going to ask. What is the general feeling amongst the profession there about are this? Many who, yeah, many, oh, many within the profession uh, have bit back and said no. And, and as I say, the Auckland District Law Society, we provided um, opposition to it. Uh, I'm sure, and it was taken into account. But nonetheless, uh, the pilot scheme is in place. But we had no one within the um, our committees and the people we went out to and the people I've spoken to, I have yet to find a lawyer who says this is a good thing. Not a single and lawyer that, that you can find? No. no, no. Wow. Wow. And in my role as a now a KC, um, not to be um, yeah. confused. Of course you are now. Gang. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and and I make it my duty as president of the Law Society and also, you know, um, convener, but also a senior practitioner, my ears to the ground, I want to find out, I want to get feedback and I want to have a voice to say, I have gone out there, I have thought about it, I've been around a long time and I do not think this is a bad thing. And as I say is that I spoke... I was horrified at the Basie report, and I still speak out against that. Yeah. Uh, and, and I do not think that this is um, a good scheme. Pay a higher hourly rate across the board is not a problem. Uh, they, you know, they're paid mm. more on a Saturday. Make it a higher rate, but do not give 
an ins- a so-called incentive based on the outcome of what you do on any given day as a duty lawyer. Mm. You should put your heart and soul into what you do. And as I say, Sean, many do. I'm really yeah. impressed with the dedication but this is not a good scheme yeah. in my view yeah. and the public will not be pleased. Are you aware of the criteria that are going to be used to judge whether or not the pilot scheme is a success? Well, th- this again is your problem because whilst you have the Ministry of Justice right now saying, look, we, we're not getting any feedback that there are any concerns with this scheme, how are you going to judge that. You're not going to get a lawyer who says, look, I thought really that this guy should go home and gather his references and think and discuss things and stuff like that, but yeah, I pleaded him guilty because I I wanted the money. Who's going to admit to that? I want to know how deeply that the feedback is going to go into the public people who have appeared in front of the court, people who have appear, pleaded guilty, at the first instance, what do they feel? Uh, do they feel like they had a really good uh, representation on the day? How did they feel like afterwards? Did they feel like they wish they had have taken more time and not pleaded guilty? How did they feel about this scheme? And do they feel like they are confident that that this mm. didn't influence them? Yeah, they but Marie, Marie, all that want. aside, Marie, I think you, you hit it in the, your opening comments here. It is perception. Justice has got it to be is, seen to be done, and them. you just can't get round no. bonus for guilty. You can't get round the perceptive problem, to my mind. And when you find such luminaries, I love using that word because I always used to get tongue-tied on it, so I've been practising, such as Sir Kim Workman, nobody could question um, his uh, dedication and his advocacy for the justice system, highly regarded, when he is concerned and when um, Dame Shan Elias also said that uh, cautioned... uh, Again, and I'm looking at a quote from her, the common law has traditionally regarded admissions of guilt with suspicion when made under inducement. When people like that are expressing concerns, we have to stop and think long and hard. Is this the right thing? And certainly um, the people and as part of the system are going to look at that and say, well, if they're worried about it, then so I should be as a defendant or a family member of someone appearing before the court. It's not just the defendant, it's their whole family. Okay, in practical terms, what can you do or other lawyers do if they are concerned about this policy? Is there any strategy? We have to keep fighting back. Uh, We have to keep fighting back, Sean. We have to keep... We have to keep gathering the data. We have to keep uh, challenging what the data is by way of feedback. We have to just keep working really hard to keep on top of this. How is it being uh, assessed? And what data can we get from people who also are in the system and also from lawyers? And we have to keep expressing our concerns because there is room, as we said earlier on, there is room for corruption, and we have to shut the doors on any scheme or any policy or procedure that allows for corruption. We have to shut the door on it, and we have to keep fighting. And I'll keep, I'll keep expressing my concerns. I will keep gathering my own data, and I'll keep, uh, I'll keep reporting and not wavering, that uh, I do have concerns, I've always had concerns about this, and I'll keep, uh, I'll see... Fighting a good fight, Marie. Fighting a good fight. Hey, thank you so much uh, for that deep dive into it. I think it is an important story, and and one that, that, um, you know, requires and demands coverage, because it does strike to, you know, one of the most important things of our society, that is our system of justice. So I thank you so much for your time this morning and explaining all, all that sure. to us. Thanks for, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Thank Cheers. you. Marie uh, Dreiberg there, the Auckland District Law Society President and long, 
long-serving lawyer in the criminal justice system, um, boy, uh, that does not put my uh, my mind at rest. Um, so you turn up at a minor court and you get uh, not really your lawyer, it's a duty solicitor who helps you through the process of a misdemeanor or something. Uh, they don't have to tell you that they'll get a bonus if you plead guilty. That just seems wrong, 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 wrong. Uh, to me, if I'm going to be honest. I'm really interested in your feedback uh, over that. And I'm sorry we took some time. I just think on a story like that, sometimes you've got to get down uh, beyond the first paragraph to understand. And it's not a proposal. That's the other thing. A lot of these stories suggest it's a proposal. It's happening now. Pilot scheme in Hamilton, it's spreading to other places, uh, including Christchurch. Um, and it sounds to me like it would be hard to find a lawyer who thinks it's a good idea. Um, unless you paid them, I guess, a bonus for thinking it was a good idea.